It's a rare quiet moment in this lot's day. I've been inspired by different people over the years in many different ways by different things. Um, but most recently, I've been inspired by a whole bunch of uh, smallholders or homesteaders who have taught me so much via the magic of the interwebs um, about looking after animals, looking after the land, all sorts of things. Um, and when we started uh, on our small holding about 15 months ago, we knew almost nothing. I was quite a good gardener, but keeping a small holding, a homestead, is a completely different thing again. So I spent a lot of time watching, reading blogs, watching vlogs, looking at websites to learn as much as I could. And, and I really did learn some very, very useful stuff. Um, and I followed out, followed the advice that I saw online and on YouTube vlogs. Over time, um, little bit by bit, I've discovered that an awful lot of the practices that I was doing, I was being guided by um, American homesteaders and the laws in the UK are a bit different. Um, and so I've discovered that for us on our, on our small holding, I've actually been doing an awful lot of things quite wrong, but no, no worries. I've um, I now know, and I've changed my practices. But I thought it might be useful to um, to share some of those differences because they're not. It's not that one is better than the other. They are just different, and it's just a different way of doing the same thing. All important cup of tea. So yeah, so I thought I'd just, just look at some of the differences. Now look, I'm not an expert. I don't have a legal background. This is literally the law here as I understand it by reading and trying to interpret the, the guidance given by government on various different things that we can and we can't do here. Obviously in America it will be different. I haven't looked at the laws there. I am just going on what I've seen online. What people can do in the states is different to what we can do here and vice versa so if you're in the states and you're watching this don't take my guidelines as the ones that you need to follow you'll need to do your own research and find out what you can do in the states we have to register our premises well not quite but nearly once you have more than 50 birds in the uk you have to register your premises and get a, a number to prove that you're registered and when we first started small holding and we got our first three chickens um, I couldn't believe that anyone would possibly want that many birds however with chicken maths being the way it is and one becomes five becomes 20 becomes 30 it becomes very easy to suddenly find your uh, hatching eggs you're raising chicks you've got meat birds you've got a duckling that's uh, a duck uh, that's gone broody and has hatched some eggs and all of a sudden you've got 49 or 55 or 70 birds um, and that number may go up and down during the year but if at any point during the year you've got 50 birds you in the UK you have to register. How we feed our birds can be different as well. In the UK we aren't allowed to give our birds any kitchen scraps so nothing that's come via the kitchen so not just scraps from a meal but if you've brought food into your kitchen to prepare it, you can't then take it out and give it to your bird. And so the way it works in our home is that we have uh, a small caddy, a small plastic box uh, with a, a biodegradable bag in it um, that has all our cooked scraps and all our meat scraps go into it. And the local authority come around and collect those once a week um, and take them away. So that's our cooked food. Then all our vegetable peelings and, and that sort of thing go onto a compost heap in the garden. But because we can't give the chickens kitchen scraps like peelings, our chickens can't go through those compost heaps either. So I have actually have a system with two different types of compost heap. One that has all our vegetable peelings and scraps in it. This one has the kitchen scraps on it and one that has uh, 
vegetable bits from the garden. So when I pull up, for example, leeks to cook those, I'll chop the top off the leek, I'll take the root off the leek um, and the outer leaves, and I'll, they never even come into the kitchen, they stay outside and they go straight on to the compost heaps that the chickens are allowed. Um, and we, we actually build a big circle of straw bales in the chicken field and put everything into the centre of there and we call that their circle of love. They absolutely love being in this. Um, it's sheltered from the wind because they can hunker down underneath the, the straw bales um, and then scratch away to their heart's content. Um, they certainly love it there, that's for sure. Um, and they turn that over and um, break it down. And I'll leave a link to the Animal and Plant Health Agency information about feeding uh, kitchen scraps to our birds uh, in, in the information below. Just click on the bit that says uh, click here or click to show more. And, and I'll put all the links for the information down there. So that's feeding the birds um, and obviously not allowing them to have access to compost heaps with kitchen scraps on it. The other thing that's uh, the other thing that I know is very different in the UK to the US is that we don't wash our eggs once they've been laid. There's a protective coating around the outside of an eggshell, which uh, if you wash the eggs, it washes that off, and then they need to be kept refrigerated. So, in the UK and in the rest of Europe, because the UK is still part of Europe, it's been decided that the best thing to do is to not wash eggs and to uh, to keep them stored at room temperature so when you go into a shop or a supermarket in the UK you'll find um, boxes of eggs and they're usually but not always usually uh, compressed cardboard boxes and they're not refrigerated so it's not that our eggs are going to be dangerous or anything if you come here and you want to use our eggs it's just a di it's just a different way of storing them that's all and um, what I do know is that if you refrigerate an egg it has to be kept refrigerated. You can't then let it back, come back to room temperature because the bacteria will pass through the eggshell into the egg, making it unsafe. When it comes to dispatching um, birds, uh, again, the UK is, is different to the US. Uh, small holders, backyard keepers and small farms can slaughter on site um, a maximum of 70 birds a day, but we can't just pop them into a killing cone and cut their throats. We have to dislocate their necks first. Um, so we have, the bird has to be unconscious before it's bled out. So we've had to learn how to either hold a chicken by its, by its legs at one end and hold its neck at the other and just gently pull uh, until you feel the click of its neck dislocating. Or you have to uh, use a broom handle method where you lie the bird on the ground and you put a broom handle across the top of it with your feet either side and um, hold the legs and pull upwards and back and that will dislocate their neck as well at that point pop them into the killing cone cut the neck each side uh, so that it bleeds out very quickly and then and then that's the legal way of doing it so having watched various different people on american vlogs um, and videos helping educational videos showing us how to do that and having actually made my own killing cone um, after that I then discovered that I wasn't going to be allowed to use it and that I would need to learn how to dislocate uh, dislocate a neck um, to render a bird unconscious before I use a killing cone um, so it's been a steep learning curve and and I'm sure as time goes on There'll be, there'll be more things to learn and I'll discover other things I'm doing not quite right. And obviously as soon as, I, as soon as I've learnt that I'm not doing them correctly, I'm then adjusting my practices. Um, because actually it's, there isn't a manual called everything you need to know uh, in every circumstance ever. Um, and it just doesn't exist and it can't. And obviously because the law changes as time goes on, anybody who wrote that manual now it would be out of date again as soon as a, a, a law was changed even slightly now the other thing that's having an enormous impact on poultry keepers in the UK at the moment um, is the threat of avian flu and since the beginning of December since December the 6th we by law have had to keep our birds inside so they either need to be completely housed 
or if they are allowed out of a house, they have to be completely protected from any contact with wild birds. So being the amazing uh, poultry keepers that we are, uh, we've found all sorts of ingenious ways of keeping our birds safe and protected. So people have put them into uh, greenhouses, into polytunnels, um, they've converted barns and stables, they've built all sorts of amazing structures in their gardens to keep their birds protected. So for example we bought this large pen which came in a kit form and this fabulous outbuilding was going to be my garden room and potting shed and I had visions of a, a wonderful wood burning stove in there and a day bed at one end um, and a potting shed type arrangement at the other end. However, the bird flu situation meant that everything changed um, and I strapped a load of pallets together along the front here, uh, built a door frame, more pallets, there's chicken wire above it um, and it gives them a secure safe place to be. So what we're hoping is that this restriction will be lifted on the 28th of February. That's the date at the moment that we've been given that we will be able to let our birds out, but it could be reviewed. At that point, all the birds would have been in for 12 weeks. And under European law, uh, an egg that's sold as a free range egg, the birds of, of free range birds can only be kept inside for a maximum of 12 weeks in any 12 month period and over here the majority of the eggs as i understand the majority of eggs are now free range eggs and so the the egg industry will be devastated uh, it will be I mean, there, would, there would just be uh, enormous economic repercussions if we can't let our birds out after the 28th of february but on the other hand it's much better to have your birds in and minimize the risk of them getting avian flu that's actually you know that's a better thing to do than just being able to call your eggs free range so it's it's tossing up which is the which is the most um, pressing and urgent need um, and we just have to wait to hear from defra who are the government department that deal with farming and rural affairs um, to find out what's happening with that so uh, so that was it that was uh, so what I've discovered so far of the differences between uh, UK and USA what I have discovered um, which I probably knew anyway was that poultry keepers are fabulous people um, and actually all we want to do is do the best for our birds um, whether we're keeping them as pets um, whether we keep them f for their eggs to sell uh, whether we keep them as meat birds, what, whichever reason we keep our birds, what we want to do is we want to do the best for them um, and keep them safe and treat them humanely. Um, and long may that continue. If you enjoy my vlogs, please leave a comment below, uh, like the videos, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. Mm -hmm.